Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4, the new order as the Black Army. Let us continue on from where we last left off. So, we're going to be securing the frontier, probably increase local cooperation, get a little bit more manpower from that. And then do ground the Siberian Falcon. We'll get a Cossus Belly against a guy that's directly on our border, who's currently fighting Tomsk. Really, I don't see anybody actually winning in that conflict, so no matter what, we really are just picking at the scraps. And I'm completely fine, let me just say, picking at the scraps. How much manpower do you guys have? You have zero and you have 49,000. Yeah, which signals to me that you have some pretty high populated zones. Tomsk doesn't, it's just fairly large. And we have another military factory free as we actually have two military factories for free. So I go with one and one seems like an okay uh, choice there. I think they have 54,000 manpower. So I am going to train up, I think, three of you. Because we don't have enough support equipment, but that's fine. And you guys are elite infantry and regular infantry. Why not train up two of you as well? Just more units is fine. I mean, our manpower, again, it's not great, but... I think we just need... We need a lot of men to secure our future positions. So you're still doing okay over in your war. A 17. It's got it for loot, but again, I think we just want to integrate as much land as we possibly can. One, it doesn't, we don't have to divert any attention into uh, garrisons because they're going to be core territory. Going to cause us more political power loss, but eh, it, it's kind of fine. Tomsk is now in here. But yeah, if you want to fight amongst each other forever, I am fine with it. So then you right now, 100,000, 35,000 of them currently are in training. Uh, we have 360 people in the Air Force. So, I mean, how many men have I lost? Where if our total manpower pool is 264,000, I have 100,000. There, there's no way I've lost, like, 80,000. I guess we have 10,000 troops in garrison right now. But either way, I don't see how I could possibly have lost, like, 50,000 men so far. I know the war against the other guy didn't go great. But even then, it only said we lost, like, 12,000, like, 13,000 manpower. So where's, where's the rest of my troops? I would like to know where the rest of my men are, please, and thank you. Attitudes declared war on the Polish Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic. Who's Attu? The gods of the north. Don't... Oh, it's you, the divine mandate of Serbia. Apparently, people were saying that this is actually, like, a bug. Like, this should not be, um... Showing up here. Is that something to do with, like, Omsk doing some weird stuff? But, I mean, if you're all the way up here now, you can do whatever the hell you want, I guess. We'll probably have to kill you at some point, of course. The Divine Mandate of Siberia. How many troops could you possibly have? You have 2,000 manpower. Apparently, four to six divisions. We do border you, but I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. So, where is... Where is the, um... Where are the, like, the... The Soviet Polish, because I I know there's some here, and there's no Nova Polska. I guess yeah, I guess it's you, because that's your flag. I'm not I'm not too sure honestly, because they don't look like they are Soviet at all. Because they're um, maybe, maybe you were. Okay, apparently he was a member of the Communist Party, so I get I guess that makes sense. So we'll integrate Tuva right now. We're gonna be losing or we're gonna be gaining point two four. Which is not great, also. That's not even my country at all. So once you're done, in a few more days, we will then prepare to invade you. Speak to the agrarians. You're not a, um... Well, you don't exist anymore, so this will automatically bypass. Get some more support here. We do integrate you. And then, of course, we will ground the Siberian Falcon. We'll go to war, and then go back to war, back to back. For the common moron. How did Misha allow himself to get roped into this? Ironic that he'd be visiting moron. I'm pretty sure that's not how he pronounced. Uh, he had to be if this was his life now. He didn't hate having to live under the Black Army. It certainly beat the regime of Adriv. But it was a, a bit extreme to his liking. The Social Democratic Party was much more up his alley. But yet, whether he feared repercussions or if deep down in his heart uh, he saw the potential for greatness, Misha agreed to travel to the newly liberated territory. Here, he commanded, this is the place. Mongolia was never an industrial powerhouse, but this was not the Garahose house of a Genghis. 
This is a meeting hall eight in a retirement home. The scene beforehand brought a smile to the bitter old man. The hammer and sickle, the rose, the brilliant tapestry of a star atop the sambiol. A little under a hundred men and women crowded the room, each wearing some memorabilia of their respective party. Green and companion! Misha faked a large grin and followed the script. The massive turnout here shows something. We are making real progress. Misha put uh, all into his act, but he was unenthused. The crowd was having no part of it. Now, I want you to take a deep breath. Misha stopped letting out a sigh. Ugh, listen, I'm going to cut the bullshit with you. The council wants me to give you the spiel about liberation and freedom, but that's all looks. The visibly confused occupants of the Zoom raised their eyebrows. Was this some kind of joke? Misha could see that things were going south. Listen, I, uh, it's just that... Misha took a deep breath. It's that... Uh, I can't explain how this will work with just uh, pre-made speech. Anarchy is something you must enjoy uh, for yourself. I've seen it firsthand. I've lived in a state where people were shot if they passed out from exhaustion. I've seen the tyranny firsthand, and I was used to it. It hardly fazed me to see the tyranny... It hardly fazed me at the time. Now I've seen the alternative, I've seen true cooperation, and it's beautiful. You can bring all that to your commune, you can bring cooperation. Many glances were shared between different parties before they looked in Rearshot, giving their nod of approval. Not too bad for a reformed conscript. Uh, of course, we get some more technology. It's 1964. We could go for it. I mean, you're a little bit ahead of time. Is there anything cheaper that I would want? You know what? Getting better rifles does make sense for us, I think. And I still don't... I figured it out. I figured out the button. We'll deploy you up to 200. You're also now no longer going to fly there. You're going to fly over here. Do you have any aircraft? No. Do you have aircraft? No. Okay, so that works. But again, both works out pretty well for us. So in 15 days, we'll declare war on you. It really shouldn't be too much of a problem. I mean, this front line is actually shorter. And if you're already at war with Tomsk, you have four to eight divisions, which does uh, frighten me a little bit. But again, if you're fighting this major war... It's not a big, big deal. I'm also going to transfer you, of course. How about you actually go here? Just because you worry me a little bit more. Also, these troops on our border from the Holy League, or whatever the hell they want to call themselves, do scare me a little bit. But I think we're going to be fine. And once we're at war, probably go straight for a progressive peasantry. We're going to integrate you for 90 days. We're going to lose some war support, but I think that's kind of okay. We get two civilian factories, which actually is really nice for us. And you are civility plus 5% in a city under siege. So people all around us are declaring war. We should be relatively well, like safe. How I think Russia has kind of been designed is that each little area is kind of its own subsection. You know, we have these areas. These guys have these areas. You know, these guys have over here. You have the north. And at some point, once you finish your folk street, that's when you kind of break into other regions. If that makes sense. Like, we'll conquer our region, and then we can conquer areas of the new regions. I think what I'm saying makes sense, and I'm hoping you're following along. But we can now march our troops into this territory. You go here. 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 And you go towards the north. So march our troops straight into the country. I think we can probably just do a regular attack. I'm hoping... Because, like, right now, our organization's not great. I will admit that. But your Tomsk... Well, actually, it's only this area in the south that actually matters. Tomsk itself doesn't make a difference for the war. It's um, for us winning our war. Uh, who's moving this way? You don't need to move that way. You come down to here. Like, I don't think this war should be too, too difficult. We might actually be able to win the war without actually firing a shot, because all of the AI's troops are on the Tomsk border. And if that's the case, I will take it. Because Tomsk, I know for a fact, is not going to be a uh, problem. The Nova Skubrisk airport aircraft plant captured. The recent fall of Nova and the retreat of enemy forces across the frontiers, the battlefield has left us to control the now idle airport plant. Towering and dormant, the factory was constructed before the Great Patriotic War, and has manufactured vehicles capable of flight for administrators ever since. Now with the plant under control, we'll soon have access to fresh arsenal of aircraft fit for any purpose for our armies. Motor engines roar and, and squadrons of planes uh, may fly in the Siberian skies, bearing our insignia. To first dominate the pl uh, planes and waste of central Siberia by land, we must tame the wilds of the air in a broken Russia. I mean, I've already... Oh, you actually make things... My, my ship's actually a lot better. So I, of course, am going to take it. Still no signs of enemy forces, but I think that's completely okay. And Nova Cerberus is going to capitulate very, very soon indeed. Uh, do we have any more cities over here? Just you. So we'll make our way up north. 
Yeah, and there's an airport, but again, there's no actual planes in it, so it doesn't matter so much. And we have won the war. Fantastic. We're going to delete all of our old plans, draw a huge border with you, and of course, prepare for an invasion of Tomsk. So I would say that was a pretty decent fight, seeing as we didn't have to fire a single shot. Yeah, I know you're in exile territory. If you can just leave that area, though, that would be nice for us. And we'll have a few more troops ready to deploy soon. Okay, we actually have more manpower. It looks like we are slowly getting more, so we're at 50,000 now. We do still need more political power. So we need to integrate this region next. It's going to cost us another 25 political power. I mean, how many troops do I have in garrisons right now, then? 13,000, which is way more than I would like. Um, logistics, we're still completely fine on everything. So maybe we want to even start trying to produce, like, a handful of tanks. I know there's no template for the tanks yet, but we might still want them in the future. Okay, what has just happened? Nixon, Richard Nixon has resigned. Not a surprise. And then, of course, we will bring down the Leviathan. Tomsk, with your three divisions, I really cannot see you actually posing any threat whatsoever. And that will lead to us having secured a pretty decent foothold in the region. And again, I wouldn't actually even mind deploying these guys right now. Pull you up to the front line. 50,000 men. And you declare war on the Komi Republic. I honestly, honestly, I thought that was Richard Nixon leading Comey right there, but that is not the case. So I, I think JFK then is going to be the president at the moment. Yes, he is. He, of course, is going to be getting shot sometime soon, but we'll uh, we'll see when that actually occurs. And we still don't have... I, I just want to... If I form you, we get a lot of negative modifiers. We'll enter a regional stage, granting greater access to diplomatic options and greater economic systems. And that seems nice for us. We also have more military factories. We have another one. Probably just like one more thing of uh, rifles is fine. And you know what? Let's go for Research Excavation 3, just in case we need it for the future. I don't think we will, but just in case. Okay, the Gorka Tank Brigade has been destroyed. I don't even know who the, the Gorky Tank Brigade is. But we won't worry about that right now. Yeah, because you focus on these people around here, I think. So I don't have to worry about you too, too much. I would like more political power, though. I'm just saying, I would like more political power. But I don't know if I'll ever actually get access to it at any time in the near future. Bring down Leviathan. National Focus canceled. Why would it be canceled? That's a little bit strange. I don't know why it got canceled at the last possible moment. Of course, our troops will march in. You will go to... Oh, you, you troops are actually extremely weak. So I have bad news for you, my friend. Uh, so you're going to go to the city. You're going to go to that city. Uh, you are going to go to here, and one of you is going to go up towards the north. And that should be, I think, every major city. These guys really... Still a 62 attack, even with your... I guess you're just modified a lot, unfortunately. I'm hoping we don't lose too many men in this fighting. We might... We have 105,000 men on the field compared to their uh, 15,000. So, I would say right now, we have a pretty decent-sized army. I don't know if we're, like, the strongest in Russia. No, we actually might be the strongest in Russia. Like, looking at how many brigades everybody else has. The Siberian Black Army is, by far, one of the most powerful. So, somebody just got elected to Mexico. It looks like the Social Democrats. Uh, we'll follow that up with maybe, like, one more thing of anti-tank. Yes, I know we're not training any troops, but I'm not going to worry about it. And we have resistance occupation on you, 45%. I think we, I think it's going to inherit it from um, the old occupiers. Because uh, the guy we just conquered was occupying this area, there were already some resistance there. And, of course, JFK has been shot. Uh, nobody is surprised by that, I would say. And Tomsk is very, very, very close to the capitulation. How are you losing this fight, though? I do not know, but now that we finish this, we can integrate you. Follow that up by forming the Siberian Free Territory. 
The Siberian Black Army unites Central Siberia. Sporadic news and reports of announcements coming from Central Siberia have confirmed that the region has fallen under the control of the previous obscure entity known as Siberian Black Army. Um, based on the teaching of Nestor Makhno from the days of the Russian Civil War, society following a militarized anarchism was formed, where the population was not protected by the state but by local militia and their commanders, that were to protect the communes and their anarchist system. This ideology, first adopted in the lands between Central Siberian Republic and Gurkin Yododa, Supreme Soviet, as both governments collapsed, has now asserted itself over the entirety of the Central CSR's former territory by using the armed force of this new Black Army. Despite all the challenges that such a system has introduced. So we now have a whole new location. Uh, I will put my troops right now half on this border, half on this border, because I don't know who is going to be... Um... Yeah, so we bypassed that, obviously. Free military factories, we got one more. Let's throw that into another unit of tanks. Even though, again, we don't really have enough rubber, but I'm kind of okay with that. And we actually have a ton of manpower now, which is amazing. So deploy our troops to wherever they need to be. You don't need to be going up to those cities up towards the north anymore. I can tell you right now that it's not required. Um, let's actually go for military construction three. I know, no, we're not. We're going to go for the uh, 1960 tech. We'll get you guys going as well. Do I outnumber both these people on my flanks? You have four divisions. You have six to eight. And so I do. We'll draw up our offensive line. Something like that, I think, makes sense. And we return the people's wealth. Follow that up with the uh, revolutionize the apparatus. Get a little bit more stability out of that as well. And we actually have 50 political power, which means I'm going to now integrate you. And maybe we'll do some development or something like that. Because we're yeah, because we're no longer a warlord. Which is nice. Ilosha held his weapon high in the sky as, a, as his column marched down the streets of central Nova Sabrisk. The streets were littered with debris, papers, and men. He couldn't help but grin as he watched his companions drag men from their houses, both alive and dead. He had achieved the unthinkable. He was responsible for bringing down his former oppressors. They had it coming for a long time. When the woman from the Black Army approached him in the middle of the night from his prison cell of a house, he was startled. Anarchy, he said, rubbing his eyes from his sleep. I thought we already lived in that. How naive he was, the woman explained it all to him over the course of the following nights. How he was just a pawn in their game, how easily replaceable he was to them, and how much more he could mean if he'd been a part of the community that relied on him. Ayalosha was ripped away from his satisfied a feeling when out of the corner of his eye he noticed a balding man carrying a briefcase slipping into the alley. If he had begged a real reactionary, he would sure to be remembered among his commune. Breaking from the column, Ayalosha followed distantly behind the man. He could swear he was whispering something. Ayalosha quickly in his pace. If he was to get a little bit closer, he could. Get back! Get the fuck away from me! The man snapped around, pointing at his firearm at Alosia's chest. I tell you, back the fuck up. He was frozen in fear. It was easy to watch the men shoot from the streets, but being one-on-one -on -one with one of Solivsky was different. With the Solovitsky was different. The man's eyes were crazed like a wild dog. Alosia's hand absolutely minor began to drift from his gun. Don't fucking do it, I'll shoot. Alosia was frozen in fear, but his hand continued to claw for a gun. But what could have what could have gotten into him? He pulled a pistol from his hip and fired into the man once, a th twice, and a third. He was sure he was dead. Alosha leaned over to, for the kill, the content of the breeze case scattered on the ground. He did it. He killed a real reactionary. It made him sick. It's different to actually take a life. So we're going to lose 775 um, manpower. Kind of okay with that. Little revolution apparatus. Follow that up with probably a... Um, daily social support goes down by 0.5%. Or you are... No matter what, we lose um, support here. But you get more support for despotism. Because right now, the despots are at 24%. The conservative democracy... So I think we're actually kind of integrating the former um, pie charts of the people that we've conquered. So our party support is kind of dwindling. But I think that's kind of okay. As long as we keep taking the uh, options to secure the libertarian socialist position. So it looks like Borman is definitely going to end up winning this war. I mean, Borman or Goring, I'm not too sure which one is going to eventually come out on top. Also, what the hell's happening with these guys' borders? It, it makes me sick to look at. Just, It's just disgusting. Okay, so you'll be integrated fairly soon. And we, we should be safe for a while, at least until we finish um, this decision here. Siberian Black League is declared war on the People's Republic. 
I mean, how many troops does the Black League have? Five divisions? Like, that's really not a lot. Again, I, I have, like, the biggest army in Russia right now. So I, I, I'm, I feel pretty safe with most of our uh, decisions here. So we'll follow that up, of course, with relying on the people's justice and a city under siege. He flipped open a lighter and brought it to the cigar on his lips. He uh, took a long drag off of it and, ex and exhaled the smoke into the air. He nearly matched the smoke in this city from the streets. The composer traced his finger along the shot of glass on his desk. Music. He needed to hear some music. First of all, he needed to close the blinds. The stench of death hung in the air. He's lucky to be in the studio when the Black Army breached the city walls. Karams weren't so lucky. He had his disagreements with the man, but his faith was undeserved. His skull caved in and his contents leaking all over his shirt. So many novels and poems spilled onto the streets of Tomsk. Where they belonged with the people. Mr. Skolovitz! We need to get out of here immediately. Fucking mob has gone mad. They've hanged. I know. Please. If you would, close the door on your way out. Skolovitz stood up and dragged himself all across the room to the studio, bringing his vodka with him. Skolovitz turned down the music in a scoff ambience and opened his mouth to address the dying city. He struggled to find the words to say, picked around his brain. All he could find was the music notes. He would scream the concerto and the drums. The beating heart of Russia, if he could. He moves around as someone, sh something shot from his mouth. We could have done our best, he gulped. This republic was founded on the future, a state of tomorrow. The bumps along the way were natural, it meant progress. We spoke of a world where Russia was not a state of barbarism, of fiefs, of serfs. A new Russia is on the horizon. Violence occupied the lull of his speech, one way or another. I make my last plea to you, consider the path you are treading. Are we sure that we are content to bring the world savages? This is not the end, we can learn to do no better. From the outside, Sotovich could see his aide motioning him to leave without a goodbye. Skolovich raised the volume of the music and, and hobbled to the door, to the roof then. His aide nodded. Kamal is ready to airlift us out of here. The composer scoffs where we go. I don't know, sir, but this city is dead. So we've lost another 10% stability, so our stability is dropping uh, pretty fast. I mean, when does overextended administration go away? Eventually, I don't know. But I think that at least for right now, this is going to be a good time for us to end this episode. So thanks very much for watching. My name is Anthony. If you've enjoyed, burn a thumbs up. If not enjoy, throw some down. You want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.